72 hours, goddamn, I'm feeling late. Damn, I'm in the face of my mind. Let's look at that cloud now, and this night is never on vacation. Start off that mind, I'm riding in. What is going on guys, Horcrux here, thanks for tuning in to the channel, this is my Magic of Sorcerer PvP build for the Stone Thorn patch, and I don't think I'm ever going to change this build up, I'm absolutely in love with this build, no, the thumbnail was not a clickbait, you can easily get all the stats I mentioned in the thumbnail in this build at pretty much any given time, there's no special niche play or special proc that you have to do, this build just gets those stats intrinsically, so without further ado fellas, we're going to hop right into it. So, on the character sheet, here's everything completely unbuffed, so bear with me while I actually get all this shit to work. So, we're using a, a mythic item. It is the uh, Tolan's uh, consistency, so the way uh, this necklace works, I'll show you in just a moment. As soon as I run out of magic, which is going to be a very long time with this build, uh, I forgot to roll dodge. You see, I, I guys, I can't even get my resources down enough to show you... <laughs> pretty ridiculous okay a couple more roll dodges all right so this should be good so here's everything that you guys saw in the thumbnail 3200 spell damage 2500 magic recovery, 2k stamina recovery, health recovery through the roof amazing health amazing magicka crit resist also super super high it could be pushed further and then on the back bar if you're worried about resistances don't worry we're hitting the 20k soft cap which i suggest running on any light armor build as a bare minimum so yeah there's the stat sheet guys this is i'm not gonna say it's a broken build but this is by far one of the most fun easily attainable builds that you can currently run so what am i running you can probably tell by the name what i'm running but a little bit more about the character sheet uh, running the Mage Mundus Bewitch Sugar Skulls. Uh, since uh, we're running a Destro Sword and Board, we don't really have a direct heal, so it's very important to have as much health recovery uh, um, as possible. So that's why Bewitch Sugar Skull uh, comes into play here. Uh, you can run the Breton, a little more tankiness. Uh, I'm currently a High Elf. Uh, you can also run a Dark Elf, but I don't believe you need to run Dark Elf because you definitely don't need the stamina. We have a 21k stamina pool to play around with, so... Adding any more into that is just a redundant, so definitely go with high elf for this one. Potions we're using, uh, pretty much tri stats. Just use tri stat potions. Doesn't matter if they're the crown store. Doesn't matter. Tri stats is amazing because we get major four to two. We get all our recoveries, even our health recovery is really really nice when we pop these. Um, I think we yeah we have fifteen hundred health recovery. It's pretty fucking dope. That's like a 750 tick every two seconds of passive healing on top of our skills. I'm going to show you how we're going to use that uh, here in just a moment. So that does it for that. Now when we come to the setup, I'll show you what I'm rocking. So on front and back bar, running shackle breaker, running sharpen, running the increased weapon damage enchantment. Since we do have a really, really high amount of spell damage, this does stack uh, pretty amazingly. Uh, you can also run infused, you can run charge if you're more into the dueling aspect of it, but if you run either of those, I would suggest running a shot glyph instead of the increased weapon damage one because the just really doesn't pair well with them, considering infused has a greater chance to apply. Oh, Siri just went off. Good God. I'm recording the video, but uh, yeah, infused, uh, you can apply concuss more often and also charge. So yeah, you definitely want to charge the enchant for those. But if you're running sharpen as I am, it did get a recent buff about five or 600, which is about 1% worth of damage, but uh, it is a buff nonetheless. I'm always a big fan of sharpened. I really like to over penetrate as much as possible. But yeah, the weapon damage enchant pairs really well with that. So Shackle Breaker got a little bit of a buff, just a max stat increase essentially. Uh, back bar, instead of absorb stamina enchantment, you'll probably just want to run poisons. It's not often we're going to get to lie attack on our back bar and the way enchantments work on the back bar. Are. They're pretty dog shit anyway, so uh, just run poisons on your back bar. And ideally, you will want a sturdy trait, but since I already had a gold M pin one, I, you know, I just said fuck it, I didn't want to waste the stones or recrafting this, so it's M pin for now. It's not a bad trait. Um, impenetrable, uh, just so you guys know, the way it's been nerfed, it only gives you like 2% crit mitigation per piece. That's not a lot, but uh, it is something. It's, there are worse traits. Uh, next up, running Swarm Mothers. You can uh, run Dami House as well. This is just a dual stat, one piece. It gives you max stamina and maximum magicka. Running Tri Glyphs on all the big pieces, just so we have a higher health pool to play around with. Running Impen, you could either run Impen or Well Fitted. I would not run Sturdy. 
Amberblasm. This is one of my favorite sets in the game, guys. Uh, they they gave it a buff last patch. It's just amazing. I've been trying to figure out how to run this on, and the way Sorks work, there's just not good process for Sorks. Unless you're dueling. There's just not, fellas. So it's better just to maximize your stats, or if you do want to run a monster set, it's very, very difficult to run a monster set and a mythic item at the same time so you either kind of have to choose one or the other and in this case i'm choosing the mythic item because this mythic item in my opinion is best in slot i'll just go ahead and hover over it in case you guys are unfamiliar so you know while your stats are below a 50 percent you gain a 450 health uh, recovery in the adjacent stat so for example i get below 50 percent magic I get 450 stamina recovery and vice versa for stamina. It's really good sorcerer because one of our skills, Dark Conversion, helps us convert stamina to magica. So there's that. I'll discuss that more in depth in just a moment. Finish going over the rest of this gear setup. So I do have divines on a couple pieces. Um, I feel that I have so much stamina, so much stamina recovery, I don't necessarily need to run well fitted. Uh, so I do have a couple of divines just to bolster our shields a little bit more as well as our outgoing damage. And then impin on the rest of the pieces. I do have one well fitted piece but uh, that's neither here nor there. It really doesn't matter what this is. I just had this laying around so <laughs> there it is. And uh, Tolan's Constancy. I do have one magic recovery on this. You could possibly take this off and put on spell damage but I really like to spam spells and over sustain so I'm keeping his recovery for now and then the remaining two is spell damage we have more than enough damage to burst pretty much fucking anyone to be honest I mean, even on tooltip everything completely unbuffed to give you guys something to compare it to crushing shock does 3000 so that'd be a, a nice baseline for you guys to compare your builds to and like I said we could run more spell damage if we wanted to but uh, I just like having the extra recovery so that's the setup. So just to recap, Amberplasm, Shacklebreaker, Swarm Mothers, and or Dummy House, and then Tolan's uh, Consistency or Constancy, whatever the fuck that is. It's such a dumb name. Whatever. Torque of whatever. Anyway. A skill bar setup, Crystal Fragments. This is receive a little bit of a buff um, by itself. Uh, you definitely don't want to hard cast this, but it can proc off itself, which is pretty cool. And then uh, when you do get to use it, it does decrease the cost of your next ability by 10 percent which isn't a lot but uh, it can't help with your sustain curse unchained i wish this would do more damage to be honest or they rework it to where it doesn't do like an echo effect but uh as for now it is what it is running inner light on the front bar this is a flex spot you can either run inner light or you can run ellie drain uh, it's just preference up to you guys um we get a lot of our healing through critical strikes so I always want to push my critical as high as I can, so that's why I have inner light here. And since we're doing that, we're able to run tripods and see having to run the uh, spell power potions uh, to get the crit. So um, we use the inner light, plus it gives a little bit of damage. And right now, with the AOE caps being implemented in Serial, the inner light ability itself is actually pretty good. Um, it pulls not blaze out of stealth, um, as you guys know. Night blades, you know, they're they're really annoying right now. If you've ever played in Cyrodiil, uh, you just can't pull anything out of self because you can't spam AOEs. Uh, this kind of helps you uh, deal with that a little bit. Uh, next is Crushing Shock. The reason I'm going with this is because you're pretty much guaranteed a critical strike every time you use this. And the reason that's important is because we're using Critical Surge for our heals and sustain. I'll go over that in a moment. Plus, you can apply all three SAS effects. It's pretty good. Uh, last but not least on our bar, Streak. Uh, best CC in the game. Um, very much overtuned in my opinion, but uh, this is our main CC, our gap closer, our get the fuck out button. It does everything. Uh, not having this on a build is uh, very difficult to play Sork, so uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, ultimate rank, Shooting Star right now. Just because I like playing against groups of people uh, by myself. Um, alternatively, you could run the so Summon Charge Atro. Um, this gives you something to line of sight behind, and it does do a decent amount of AoE damage around you if you do have people trolling you. Shooting Star is just really good because it does give you a lot of ultimate back if you hit three or four people with it. Uh, counts as pets too, you hit pets, it also um, helps with that. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Overload, it's just too clunky from. 
for my taste, especially if you're running controllers. So these are the two ults I would recommend. On the back bar, we're using Dark Conversion. Now you just essentially what this ability does: you trade your stamina for Magicka. And if you have 120 points in your CP, you can get the Unchained passive, which allows you, after you break free, to pretty much cast Dark Conversion for free. Uh, this stacks really well with Tolan's uh, Constancy, because as our Magicka gets lower and lower and lower and lower, it will hit to a point, our stamina recovery is going to be through the roof. You guys saw it. It was like 2k, or whatever the, th the thumbnail says. And then you can just transfer all the resources over to your Magicka when you have a free moment. In addition, it's very uh, niche, but you actually have a passive that helps you with channeling abilities as a high elf. I, I actually overread this. <laughs> but yeah, when you channel your casting ability, you actually take 5% less damage, which is pretty cool. The more you know. Uh, next, running Hardem Ward. Um, the change to the passive rebate. So rebate actually gives you a little bit of your magicka back for when your hard ward expires, which is pretty good, uh, pretty standard on any sort of class. Next, we're running dampen magic. You don't need harness. The sustain is astronomical as is, so just go for the extra shield damage for sure. We're in critical surge. Uh, we're running this over rapid regeneration just because you know every now and then I do need to block a meteor or I just know a leap's going to come, so that's why I opted for the sword and board. Plus, it gives you extra stats on the back. So you need some sort of healing. So Critical Surge and Balance pair really well together. So Balance is pretty much AoE around you every second. Uh, this can crit, which heals you. Plus, this gives you your uh, resistance buff. And one more thing to note. Um, if you are running a sword board, uh, Sork, sometimes you do get kind of low health. Uh, that's the importance of having a super high health recovery. So you know that's why Amplasm is so good. So you have your high health recovery. You have tripods to pop in case your health gets low. You have dark conversion to help you with the healing, and then you have this duo ability to help you with your healing to keep you capped off. Um, try not to get low because, like I said, you don't have a burst still. Last but not least, we're running temporal guard. This gives you minor protection on the back bar, and also when you block, you do get a little mitigation shield for about 5,000. And then uh, in order for that to recharge, you have to not block for like uh, 10 seconds or something like that. But uh, yeah, um, that's the bar setup. I don't see this back bar changing at all. I I don't know what you could run. I mean, you could possibly run the sword and board ult, but... Uh, just having these passive mitigation in your back bar is uh, very, very good. Front bar, like I said, interlice your flex spot. You can put on Ellie's Rain or Execute, entirely up to you. Or even Mines. Mines is pretty good. Really like playing with the Mines. So that about does it for the build. I, I kept it short and sweet. Um, there's really not much more to mention about it other than the CP tree, which I'll go over right now. Keep in mind, again, disclaimer, I'm not max CP, so your CP will vary. But essentially, you have points in Elf Warren, Spell Erosion, LA Expert, Master at Arms. Now, Staff Expert, get this up to 10%, and then the rest of your shit toss into Blessed. Next, running over to Red Tree, you have Ironclad, Resistance. Um, if you're running more well fitted or Divine's pieces, um, you can get away with. You know, putting points into here instead of on your gear. Um, just however you want to balance it out. A, a good rule of thumb is just to have around 2500 crit resist. So however you guys want to balance that, it's entirely up to you. Now, this tree needs to be uh, pretty well balanced. Uh, for the, You want your unchained passive. So when you break free, you know, like it says here, your dark conversion will be pretty much free when you cast it within 5 seconds. So put all your points in the hard yellow defender thick skin. Uh, I just got 10 in the light armor because uh, uh, it's pretty good returns. Um, I would actually suggest putting 10 in the light armor and 10 in the spell shield. Uh, that's just that's like 1% less damage, and you know once you get toward the higher ends of the CP, it starts stacking very diminishingly. So since I'm lower CP, this is just what's most beneficial for me at this time. In this tree, uh, expert defender, I usually get this up around 10 or 15%, and bastion I leave around 20%. And like I said, you need the Unchained Passive. Green Tree, we got Warlord, one in the Siphoner, just to apply the debuff to mess with your opponents. 
Uh, get these up to 11% Mooncalf and Arcanist. And then toss the rest of your points into the Tumbling and Shadow Ward. That should be uh, all your points. Like, expended pretty evenly there. And that does it, guys. Um, I will be streaming this build later on today. Uh, if you guys not subscribed to the channel, please do, so you'll be notified for that. If you do miss a stream, however, it will still be up on my YouTube, and then later on in the week I will come out with uh, mintages of my builds. I have a Sorcerer build and a DK build out right now, so throughout the week I'm still gathering clips for that. And that about does it for the build, guys. Um, like I said, this is super roly-poly build. You, you can just roll dodge for days. It's, it's pretty ridiculous, to be honest. Then the match sustains to the roof. Yeah, you don't have something flashy like a proc set, but, you know, who the fuck cares? Um, other things to note, guys, uh, just not really so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. Leave a comment, like, dislike, tell me what I misspoke on. You guys are really quick to catch me on what I misspeak. On my last video, I said Grothgar was direct damage. Technically, it's not. They did change it to damage over time, but Grothgar still procs Bloodthorn, which is a direct damage proc set. So, go figure. Thank you, Zoss, for that. And uh, you guys have a great day. Deuces.